Only recently, a 21-year-old undergraduate of the University of Lagos, Chidema Ojuku, killed the chief executive officer of Super TV, Usifo Ataga. The 300-level student of mass communication was arrested at her parents' residence in Yaba, Lagos State. The undergraduate was speaking at the Lagos State Police Command headquarters in Ikeja after being paraded by the State Commissioner of Police. Arise News obtained the exclusive interview she had with the Punch newspapers. Let's take a listen. I didn't plan on killing any, anybody or kill him. It was just to get money from him. I, I totally regretted everything I did. I'm 21 years old. Um, mass communication, you like. I sometimes do ushering as part time job. I have a mission because uh, the actress and the music. Um, separated when I was little. So I was living with my uncle. Mr. Chile killed me. Okay, so you don't know what led to them separating? No. Okay, how old were you then? I was two. Or oh, one, two, two. Okay. Growing up, I stayed with my uncle. Where is that? At uh, Moshe. Moshe? Yes. Smoking, that's me, but the picture, that's not me. Um, smoking inside just few, few years ago. Who introduced you to it? The friend is that, just friend, full time friends. You don't talk anymore. When did you begin smoking and was it before you like or after you got into it? To be after I got into the line. All this issue of you, the old girls, for instance. I'm trying to after I'm in the line. It's the deceased person. We're just friends. Okay, now some people say they have evidence of you probably flying out with the disease to celebrate your birthday with other people. I mean, outside of the country, how true is this? Have you been going out before for birthday parties or for events? No, I haven't. I've never seen him like four or five times. And also, there is another statement that the disease does not take hard drugs and that he is a very strong man. But how could you, you have power him? Him? Mm -hmm. uh, It takes drugs, it takes it, it takes milk, it drinks. So, it's not that I'm trying to put anything on anybody. I met him this time, wasn't at Midland. And when the incident happened, he couldn't speak. So I didn't take his clothes, I only took mine. I just took it and I took my dresses out. People, after seeing the video of you raising the incident, they said you, it is possible that you have killed before. No, I haven't killed before. Well, I don't know the why. I don't know the why. Neither have I spoken to her before or anything. Okay. And for uncle, I, I don't know. No one threatened me not to pay school fees or do um, what I did. But my dad paid my school fees. The usual absence in school was first was finance and secondly I was just feeling reluctant to go back to school. I wanted to do online schooling so that I can join it with my business when I start up my business. There are a lot of times that the school fees is not there. It has to be struggle to complete. After um, the incident happened, that I withdrew the money. The purpose was to use it for my fees and start up a business myself. 
Can you describe your dad's reaction when police came? My dad was very heartbroken, bitter, and disappointed. Was he resisting police arrest when they wanted to arrest you? No, he wasn't resisting. He was trying to be sure that it's actually police because. There's a particular information that after the incident happened, that immediately what you did was to call your uncle and that you now organize people to come and play this thing because we are speaking from reliable information we gathered from a series of interviews and the likes. No, I did not call any uncle to come play anything. I left the place. But is it true that, that you have told the owners of the building, the people, the people who supply the place, that if anything happens, they should reach out to certain individuals, including your uncle? No. I, I didn't say they should reach out to anybody, anything like that. No. I didn't plan on killing any, anybody or kill him. I didn't plan. I want to say that I'm sorry, Dad. I know everyone is disappointed at me. I didn't, I don't know what came over me that I did what I did. But I hope God forgives me and everyone forgives me. Mr. Atanga family, I am deeply sorry for what I did. If I had my life back, I wouldn't do anything of such. I am deeply sorry. Please, I hope you forgive me. I don't want to die. As I said about this case last week, very sad story, it's tragic, a case of homicide. First, let's commiserate with the uh, affected Ataga family. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I think that the starting point uh, for the discussion is to note uh, that lives have been affected. The life of a very promising entrepreneur uh, who will have turned 50 a day after has been snuffed out. Business may also be affected. Family has been put in a position of distress and uh, frustration, and uh, on top of all of this, there's been a lot of uh, there have been a lot of uh, conspiracy theories over the weekend, uh, which is what I find more disturbing about it. Yes. There were persons who started writing up conspiracy theories. Uh, there were persons who started generating uh, jokes out of it, you know, as if the comedy. I was more important to them, to the lives that have been affected. There were persons who, in typical African fashion, uh, started attacking uh, the wife of the disease, and started providing, you know, verifiable, uh, on uh, confirmed information, pieces of information about the family on social media. People simply forgot that, look, this is about other people's future, their happiness, whatever they have worked for their lives. And as for the young lady also, who is in, uh, involved in this, it's also a tragedy for her family. A girl of 21 years. We just listened to her. You know, all of the things she's saying, I see a lot in some of the statements she has made about peer influence, about the use of drugs, about parenting, about family background. There's no side in which you look at uh, this particular matter and it looks like a good story. Uh, some people say, well, the reason they've been uh, talking about it and be dramatizing it, including uh, uh, Side Chicks Association uh, coming forward to make statements, Sugar Daddy's Association coming forward to make a statement. I think everybody uh, should just calm down and allow the police to do their work. Mm. In that regard, two important things. The police have come forward to say that they are investigating, and they must be commended uh, in terms of the speed with which they were able to apprehend, apprehend the lady and to also come to the conclusion that there are other persons involved and investigations are continuing. So the people who have turned themselves into experts in homicide, in cockatry, in uh, uh, sugar daddyism, I think should just uh, hold their fire and allow the police to do their work in a professional manner. And once a prima facie case has been established, people have been arrested, and then, of course, they should pursue the case to its logical conclusion to ensure that justice is done. The young lady says she apologizes, uh, she's sorry. No, 
An apology does not obviate the fact that murder mm. was involved and that a crime has been committed. I don't know. It's not an excuse in law. Mm. The second point that I would like to draw attention to is a statement issued by the family, the Ataga family, the family of the victim, and signed by uh, Dr. Isi Ataga uh, on behalf of the family. And I have it here on my phone. And Dr. Isi Ataga, uh, in a piece titled The Groomer Mother, Gruesome Mother of Our Beloved Son, Michael Usifo Ataga, he makes the point that there's been a cacophony of misinformation propagated by strangers. And that cacophony of uh, misinformation uh, is characterized by lynching, a lynching party in the press and the blogosphere, which has caused a lot of stress uh, for the family. Now, you know, the family is also saying, if people have any information that they can provide to make sure that justice is done, they should not hesitate to forward such information to the police. And I think that that is a very important point. Instead of these conspiracy theories who have turned themselves to the judge in the matter. And then, of course, uh, the family also complains about false information mm. in the press and on social media. And finally, Dr. Ataga, uh, the brother of the uh, victim, is saying, we ask sincerely that you let us grieve this terrible loss with some privacy. This past week and a half has been the worst period of our lives. and That's understandable. And again, we commiserate with the family, and I think that People should respect the feelings of the Ataga family. Nobody wishes that this kind of thing will happen to a 50-year-old son. And those who have taken a, a, a comedic dimension, view of, of the tragedy, uh, should learn to restrain themselves and hold their conspiracy theories to themselves as we urge the police to make sure uh, that this does not become another case of an unresolved murder and to ensure that justice is done. Well, I find it extremely distasteful, the tendency that many of us have to reduce everything to gist and jokes, even a tragedy like this. So it's important that you um, refer to that statement from Dr. Ataga on behalf of the family and read some of it out to humanize Usifo Ataga. That was a human being. That was somebody's child. Somebody carried him for nine months and wanted the best for him. He was somebody's father. So all these um, really... Distasteful jokes have to stop. It's, it's completely unacceptable. And may his soul find peace. That is, obviously, he does did not deserve to die the way that he did at this time. It, it's horrific. It's tragic. It's heartbreaking. As for the interview with Chidema, I found it really chilling. Yes, you talked about her, her parents and her background, and she made references to how there wasn't always availability of funds for her school fees, so you can read a lot into that, and why she started the um, waywardness that she started being a runs girl and smoking and what have you. But she made this really chilling reference. She said, after the incident, and I quote, she called it after the incident, when she went and withdrew the money, she wanted to use it for her school fees and for her business. She referred to the cold-blooded murder of a human being as an incident. So even though she's crying, she's shedding these tears, she can try, maybe it will convince a judge, but the sentence for murder in Nigeria is a capital offense, it's a death sentence. So I just find her really horrific. And the idea that a lot of people were sprouting with no evidence whatsoever is that a girl that looks like this cannot commit a crime is completely ridiculous, quite frankly. We've heard it from her, from her own mouth that she did it. So we have to, I really believe in the fact that women should be treated as equals. They're women who are diabolical, as diabolical as the worst man. They're women who are as evil as the worst man. So the idea that, oh, she's young, no, it doesn't mean anything. For me, it's a sad one. Sad one for the Ataga family. I think Tunu talked about humanizing this. Let me humanize this by saying there was a report that Osifo Ataga's mom sent him a happy birthday message on Facebook on Thursday, not knowing that he was already murdered in cold blood on Wednesday. That's how human it could get. And she's quite an old woman. But most importantly, I want us to all have her in her thoughts. An old woman, your son turned 50, a milestone year. You sent him a message on Facebook on his birthday on Thursday, not knowing he had been killed on Wednesday. That's how human he could get. 
So at this point in time, I know we like salacious stories, but let's always spare them in our thoughts. And let the police do their work and do the investigative work because the police needs room to be able to do this work. Like I said before, it doesn't cut it with me, the confession I'm hearing. There's still a lot, and the family too has alluded to it, and there's still a lot of questions yet unanswered. And the police will help at unraveling all of that. So the police should step into action. And if possible, let's stop the interview of this lady now. Let's stop it. Let the police investigate, put the hard facts and the evidence through, and let justice take its course. But for most importantly, my thoughts and prayers with Mr. Osifo's children, his wife, his parents at this point in time. And we hope that at this preliminary stage of the uh, case and the tragedy that uh, various persons will learn uh, relevant lessons that are already clearly uh, indicated. <laughs>